What's up YouTube, it is Mike with Grinding Gears Garage. Today we are working on our LT250R restoration once again. Now this video is kind of a general how-to, but it, uh, it applies directly to our uh, Suzuki. We are going to be rebuilding our uh, rear master cylinder. Uh, this thing has been sitting uh, for a very long time. The rear brake wasn't hooked up at all, so I'm not sure what kind of condition this is in, so we're just going to go ahead and rebuild it. Uh, like I said, this kind of applies to just about every four-wheeler. All of them pretty much use the same style. Uh, rear master cylinder, it's made by Nissan. Uh, it's pretty much used on just about, I think, on every four-wheeler and almost every dirt bike I own. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we went with All Balls Rebuild Kit, of course. So we're going to go ahead and get the camera set up and go ahead and start breaking down our master cylinder. So we have our master cylinder set up here in the bench vise. We're going to go ahead and take our reservoir off. Now you can remove a lot of this stuff and basically leave it attached to the four-wheeler like your brake line and your master. Uh, we had to take it off to get the frame powder coated, so that's why we're doing it now. It was easier just to take it all off in one swoop. There's that. Set that off to the side. And we're going to grab a, looks like a 13 millimeter. Let's see here. Oh, 12. Got a 12 millimeter. Gonna take our brake line off. So we got our 12 millimeter loosened up. And remember, this is a banjo bolt, so there are copper crush washers on either side. Uh, the kit comes with new ones, so uh, depending on what kit you buy, if you just buy the replacement seals direct from Suzuki, you may not need to save these. Keep an eye out for them. So now that we got all that removed, we're going to go ahead and flip this over. Get out a little bit of water or whatever that is. We're going to take our arm off here. So we got our master set up here 12 millimeter locking bolt and arm that attaches to your lever on your four-wheeler trying to break this bolt loose there we go so we got the top cracked loose there's a nut inside i'm not sure if that's supposed to be welded or not but it's there so you don't want to lose that we need to separate these two jam nuts loose so we can go ahead and back these all the way off and then pull the boot off next we're going to pull our boot up now ours comes with a new one so sometimes these can be a little tough to get to pull up so if ours gets damaged oh, like it did uh, it's not a huge deal but uh, if you don't have a replacement be a little bit more careful this thing has been in here for a long time and it is pretty nasty. It's all full of dirt and stuff. Hopefully this master cylinder isn't shot. I mean, this is what it's all full of good stuff. So we're gonna clean this out so we can see the circ clip in there. So I have to start over, I had to go open my parts stash. This thing is so rusty in here around the, the, the snap ring to pull the piston and everything apart. I can't even get it apart. It's been, I mean, you saw the amount of shit that I pulled out of it. It's so rusty. So I have another master cylinder sitting upstairs from another four wheeler uh, from uh, an LT that I parted out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this apart and we'll get started again, uh, trying to pull the cylinder out. So we're back to where we were before, and if you look, you can see, let's see if I can grab something to point with, there is a circ clip right there, and there's the two tits right here. So we're going to put it back in the vise, do the 
these uh, snap ring pliers. Attempt to pull this one out. After some very careful poking and prodding with both the screwdriver and the snap ring pliers, it's able to get this out. Now, you're going to have to keep pressure down because there's a plate underneath that's going to keep the snap ring from coming up. There we go. So we got our snap ring here. We're going to clean all this up because this is pretty gross. And we have the push rod, which is actually bent, which we're going to fix. I'm going to straighten that out. So we're going to set these off to the side to get cleaned up. And we're going to grab... Here is our rod, which is actually supposed to have a seal on it, but it does not at all. Oh, here's the seal right here. So here's your plunger, here's your spring. Door doesn't look too bad, surprisingly. So we're gonna get everything set up to go ahead and replace everything. So I'm gonna move the camera real quick. But uh, you can see that it's a little rusty in here, but all in all, the bore of the master cylinder isn't that bad. I'm gonna take a rag, shove it down in there and get a better look, but all in all, it looks pretty good. So I'm waiting for the paint to <clears throat> peel off all this stuff. I got some stripper on it. We're going to take, I have a bunch of these dentist picks laying around. We're going to pop these seals off. That one took a little bit of a trip, but that one's off. If you notice, this one has a uh, smaller inner diameter. So that there's two seals, so you want to make sure you put the right one in the right spot and then you have this back one here we're going to do the same thing too and the tapers faced like this so the tapers always face towards the end of the shaft or the end of the this rod here so we'll go ahead and pop this one off this one this screwdriver actually worked a little bit better so there we go that's off now we're going to take some brake clean clean this shaft uh, plunger off nicely, make sure all this build up and gunks off of here. So we're going to clean this up, wait on the paint to peel off of our master cylinder, and then we're ready to put everything back together. So while we're waiting for the paint to uh, finish stripping off that part, we can put the new seals on our plunger. Remember what I said about there being two different uh, diameter hole seals. This one goes on the, the top here, and the other one goes on the bottom. I have some DOT 5.1, which is a synthetic 3 or 4 uh, equivalent. It's not needed. It's just something I had laying around. So we're going to take a little bit here, get it on our finger. What I do is I'm going to apply a good amount to the plunger here to help aid installing the seal. I'm going to get a little bit on the inside. Remember the flange, the tapered portion, it's going to go on like this. It's kind of hard to see. Like that, the taper goes forward. After some struggle, and we'll get this thing on here. There we go. The help of the screwdriver. Got that one on. Now it's on to the other one. Same thing, we're going to put a little brake fluid over the rear of the plunger under the mating surface to help slide everything together. She popped right on. So there we go. We got both seals on. Grab our new spring here. I got brake fluid all over my hands. Now if you'll notice, the spring is tapered. The smaller portion here goes on the little tit that's on the top. And then that's going to go back into our master cylinder, just like that. So we're going to wait for this paint to finish up stripping, and uh, we'll get ready to put everything back together. So we have our cleaned up master cylinder here. 
we are going to take a little bit of brake cleaner. Just going to just lube the walls basically. Dump that back out there. So we got a nice coating in there. We're going to place this. The fat end of the spring goes in. Goes in there like that. And we have our rod, which we cleaned up a little bit. Could be a little bit better, but for the sake of video, we're going to put everything back together. We have our large snap ring then. We're going to move over to our vise here, make this a little easier on us. Awesome, I do. So this is probably my favorite pair of snap ring pliers. They have channel lock and they do inner and outer. So all you do is clip that over and now it does exterior ones. Go and grab a screwdriver. There we go. Got that popped into place. Grab our new dust boot here. And get it out of the plastic. Just going to slip over all of this. Sit down in there. We're going to use a uh, screwdriver, but be careful because you can pop a hole in the boot. So we're just going to work it on in there. Put this around the nut. There's a little lip right there that this rides in. There we go, our dust boots on. So now we got that done. And we're gonna put the brake line on. Now this gets a new O-ring, which we have right here. It's seated in there. Clean this all up. Might be a little tough to get in because there's a new o-ring but let me grab give it a light tap see if she wants it there we go popped right in phillips screw Oop, my gloves are coming apart so i run that back in So, and we're going to put our nut back on, our lock nut, and run a brake arm back on. So thanks for watching guys, that's how to rebuild your rear master cylinder. It's pretty straightforward and a fairly easy process. Uh, we're excited to get our restoration finished up and back together. Uh, in our next video we're going to be rebuilding the rear brake on our LT250R. Hopefully it's not as bad as the original master cylinder we pulled off. This thing was pretty disgusting. So in the next video we're going to go all over rebuilding one of these and then the video after that we're going to rebuild the front calipers. So thanks for watching guys, as always, hit us up on Facebook if you have any questions. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep getting updates on new videos. And also check out our friend's uh, new YouTube channel, his name is Matt Murray. He's a very, very good friend of mine. I've been helping him do 
uh, all the videos, filming and editing for them. It's Iron Trap Garage. I'll have a link to the video in the description below. Go check his channel out. He does a lot of very, very cool hot rod videos, restorations, all kinds of cool stuff. So make sure to go subscribe to his channel. So thanks for watching guys, and we will see you next Friday.